Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And today, our text that we are reading uh, is from Mark chapter 12. We'll be reading verses 28 through uh, 44. Um, we've uh, just, uh, as we've moved through Mark's quick dramatic gospel where um, the pacing is quick because uh, we just move from scene to scene and interaction to interaction. Um, we've had Jesus interacting with the uh, Pharisees um, and um, we move uh, to uh, here in uh, verse 12 where uh, the scribes come and we are basically looking at the various um uh, 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 disagreements or uh, questioning and how uh, Jesus is going to handle all of the disputes that come before him. And he does that, as we've seen, uh, through parables. And uh, in this particular case, um, one of the scribes is going to ask him a question. Many of us are quite familiar with this, uh, where um, it, it returns to what we know as the Great Commandment, which is why this section is named that way. But our, our reading will continue beyond this. Um, but uh, uh, I'm always uh, thrilled with uh, how we read this text or how this text is presented to us, because uh, Jesus responds by saying, you're not far from the kingdom of God. What is, what is in this text that causes Jesus to respond this way? Well, a question is asked by one who should know, and when they're asked, they give the right answer. Um, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, uh, if uh, our God is one God, the Shema, the very familiar response of a practicing uh, Jew. And then to go on and to uh, uh, say that, uh, um, uh, what I like to call the Reader's Digest version, if there's anybody who would know the short answer to all that God has command, commanded, it would be Jesus. So the Reader, Reader's Digest version goes to say, it's loving God with all that you are and to love your neighbor as yourself. So the first uh, four verses, uh, first four commandments, and then the last six commandments, loving God and then loving neighbor. And the uh, scribe says, okay, yeah, got that. Um, and, uh, and then goes on to say, this is much more important than all of the acts of worship, the rituals and practices. And it is to that that Jesus says, you're not far from the kingdom of God. You recognize that it is not the rituals that God is interested in, but it is the relationship, the relationship between us and God and therefore us and one another. And that is the kingdom of God among us. I love this particular passage. Yeah, it's 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 a good one. It's a really good one. And I, I um, as you said, uh, Joy, right, the, uh, any good Jew is going to know the Shema, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, uh, right? It's recited right. every day. Uh, it's what's in the, in the um, tefillim, right? The, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the little boxes on the doorpost and on the door. forehead and uh, yeah, on the wrist. Uh, and, uh, and the second, so Deuteronomy 6 and then the second commandment, you shall love your neighbors yourself. Also from the Torah, from Leviticus 19. Uh, so, uh, Jesus is a good Jew, right? He knows, uh, yeah. he knows the Torah, uh, he studied it, uh, and he, he gives, as you said, joy, the reader's digest version of the 10 commandments, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, uh, and love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. I appreciate it uh, in the, so in the midst of these controversies, right, we've got, uh, earlier in this chapter, the Pharisees and the Herodians, and then later the Sadducees come, and now one of the scribes comes, and you expect a di another dispute, right? Because you got uh, the the Pharisees and the Herodians from last week are trying to 
um, from last week's reading are trying to trap Jesus uh, by asking him if uh, it's lawful to pay taxes. And then the Sadducees are trying to trap Jesus by uh, questioning him about the resurrection. And so that's what you expect uh, when you see, you know, one of the scribes came, right? Like uh, he's going to try to uh, trap Jesus in some way too, but that's not the case. The scribe actually is curious, right? Uh, and and uh, seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asks him this question, and then uh, it's it's not a dispute. They they agree. They they both agree that this is uh, this is uh, what the kingdom of God is about. I, I love what uh, our commentator says on our website, Brent. Uh, um, Triggers. Triggers. Triggers, thank you. Uh, he says, uh, this this passage makes the crucial point that not all scribes stand opposed to Jesus. Uh, right. uh, it implies that no opposition to Jesus, however entrenched, is entirely closed off to the work of God and the world. I, I think that's just really well put, that uh, even as we expect this controversy, that there's even, you know, even the scribes, even the religious authorities with whom Jesus has had conflict, uh, uh, even their opposition is not so entrenched that it can't be open to the kingdom of God uh, as revealed in Jesus. So I, I just think that's a lovely point. Jesus um, Jesus doesn't say anything controversial, nor anything that any good Jew wouldn't answer. I mean, that is, this is, uh, this is a first, uh, sort of first grade question. What's the great commandment? This, uh, the great Shema is the positive version of the first commandment. First commandment, you shall have no other gods. The positive version, love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God. I do think mm-hmm. that uh, there's a lot to build on here in terms of just uh, what we share with Judaism. And there's really finally in the end then only two sins, failure to love God and failure to love the neighbor. And they have an infinite degree of variety in the ways that we fail to love God and that especially we fail to love the neighbor. As it, if it ended there, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, they dared ask him no other question. We'd be in good shape. But as the text (laughs) goes, then it's Jesus who sort of escalates it. Jesus sort of escalates the controversy by pointing to a woman who is. um, I got to make sure I'm doing this the right way, right? So uh, because the reading here goes all the way through verse 44, and then you have in verse 41, um, he sits down opposite the treasury, and he watches a woman put in two coins, and she uh, he basically starts to attack the temple. Hmm. And uh, especially as he continues to go further, that all of this is occurring in, in the shadow of the temple, and implied in this controversy when it's all these two things, loving God and loving neighbor, are worth more than all offerings. That, um, and this is, I think, goes uh, to the. Uh, this is consistent with the Old Testament when Psalm fifty, in Psalm fifty, God says, "Hey, I don't need an offering from you. Um, if I needed a bull from your house, I'd, I'd tell you I don't need it." Um, and so, there is something here as we approach Holy Week in Lent. That is a call to us to recognize that our religious structures, I don't, I don't know what preacher is going to do with this, but uh, to recognize that as necessary as our religious structures are, which require offerings and sacrifices and generosity, um, they, we always run the risk of starting to think that the perpetuation of the institution is more important than loving God and loving neighbor. I appreciate that, uh, particularly um, in this season right now where there's so much um, uh, desire to preserve institutions. Uh, and um, we're uh, guilty of that in, uh, in our, among our denominations and, and within our congregations. And uh, that, that's, that's um, I, I appreciate the simplicity of the way that you said that, Ralph. And it's, con- it's, uh, it's in continuity with what we have in these texts, um, where um, the scribes of this sort of goes along with what we were talking about last week in terms of, you know, being 
uh, why are we doing this? Do we remember that it is bearing witness to God, not for our own prosperity or our own popularity? So here we have, uh, just before uh, Jesus makes the statement of, of the woman or, or points out this woman, um, beware of the scribes who walk around in their long robes to be greeted with respect. Um, at, that the here is that uh, putting up ourselves um, and also this idea of getting the best seats or the place of honor, that's a different kind of ritual. We don't just have rituals in the church in the way that we carry out our worship. We have customs and practices in our society. So everyone is not a professional religious person who calls themselves a follower of Christ. And yet we too have to be careful about why are we practicing the rituals that our culture enables us to practice. Are we doing that to make a name for ourselves? Or are we doing that so that we point to the presence of God. And when we are pointing to the presence of God, it's going to look like loving God and loving neighbor. And when we are not, it's going to look like positioning ourselves. And it's really interesting that here Jesus points to a woman, a, wid a widow, and just to be clear, a poor widow. And yet, in her offering, it is clearly an offering to God from all that she has. She holds back nothing. She's not giving from abundance, but she's giving with abundance. And that is who Jesus points out. And is that what we're willing to do, to point out those who are giving abundantly to God or those who are giving the riches, uh, a portion of their riches. It's a very different attitude. Yeah, uh, that's really, really helpful, Joy. Thank you for that. I, I, that that text right before the widow's offering, right, that you mentioned, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, have the best seats in the synagogues, and yet they devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. I think you're right. I mean, and, you know, it is a natural human inclination, right, to want the best seats, the, the court said seats, right, or the, or the, head, yeah. the, the, the head table or whatever. All right, now but you get, you get too close just, to home now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, but it's exacerbated, I think. It's amplified. Maybe that's a better word for in our time and place, right, where, where we want, our brand, right? Where we promote our, our personal brand, right? Where, where we have our social media likes and friends and, you know, the, it's just so yeah. easy to feed that ego, right? And uh, it's such a temptation. And, and yet, as you say, we're called not to that kind of acclaim, not, not that kind of human attention, but to, to love God and love neighbor and to give, uh, to give generously, uh, not for show, right? Not so that people notice, but to give uh, for the sake of, uh, of the neighbor and, and for the sake of loving God and loving neighbor.